Welcome to Explore Kids Online. Yeah, welcome. Here's another video and we hope you enjoy it. Ellie, can you do an impression of a pig? Okay, that's really, really good. Can you do an impression of a snake? No. No, fair enough. Um, can, why can't you do an impression of a snake? It always sounds like a sheep. Oh, and there is quite a lot of difference between a snake and a sheep. Okay, a snake, for example, hasn't got any legs and it hasn't got any wool. <laughs> um, and the other thing about a snake that's different from a sheep Jewish is that people. Jewish people, yeah, around the world will eat sheep or lambs, but they won't eat snakes um, and they won't eat um, pigs and certain other animals that are considered to be um, unclean. Donkeys. Um, donkeys, yes. Yeah. Bastards. Yeah. Yeah, vultures and uh, different animals like that. Um, they're considered to be unclean. That doesn't mean that they're dirty necessarily. It just means that they're not fit for to eat. Okay. And um, lots of the early Christians were Jews. Okay. And so it must have been a really mind-blowing thing when God asked one of them, a guy called Peter, to actually eat some of these animals. Now, God wasn't really doing it. It was in a vision or a dream. Should we tell the story? Mm -hmm. Here we go. This first picture is, no, neither of these guys is, is <laughs> <laughs> neither of these guys is Peter. One of them is an angel, the guy in white. So Ellie's doing another impression now of an angel. She can do a pig. She can do an angel. There's no end to her. But she can do a sheep. There's no end to her talents. Okay, the other guy is a guy called Cornelius. Now, Cornelius is a non-Jewish person. Was a non-Jewish person, and as well as not wanting to eat certain kinds of animals, a lot of Jewish people had a hard time understanding that God was interested and loved non-Jewish people, and that was a bit of a hang-up that they had. And um, the, lots of the early Christians who were Jews had that same hang up too, but God wanted them to understand that that wasn't true. And that's what this story um, is all about. An angel appeared to Cornelius, who even though he wasn't a Jewish person, um, was a very rich man, but he, he loved God and he wanted to know God more and more and more. And so the angel appeared to him and said, I want you to go, or, or rather I want you to send some servants down to Joppa, where a guy called Peter is staying with a friend called Simon um, in a house there, ask Peter to come back and talk to you and your family all about how you, know, realize, you can know God. What's you're that? called Peter and you've got a friend called Simon. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, so go <laughs> and, that's right. Go and, uh, go and ask Peter to come and tell you how you can know God. So Cornelius says, right, I'm going to do that. So he sent two servants all the way from Caesarea, which was where he lived, down to a place, down to Joppa, where Peter was staying. Quite a long journey, but uh, particularly as they had to go on horses or donkeys or foot. Um, a long journey, but he sent his servants. Now, when he got there, when they got there, or just before they got there, Peter was uh, up on the roof of the house that he was staying in praying. Uh, houses back in those days had flat roofs and you could use them for a garden or a place roofs, to sit. We? we have, but you wouldn't be able to get up onto no. our roof. <laughs> but these, these roofs were built so you could actually sit Hi. up there, sleep up there if you wanted to sleep as an extra room, have a little bit of a garden up there. You could um, have a party. A, you could, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And some a bit of privacy too. And so Peter went up there to pray. And while he was praying, uh, he had a vision and in the vision a sheet or a blanket was lowered down from heaven with all kinds of the animals that we talked about that Jewish people couldn't eat those animals that were considered to be unclean and can you see what there is a snake there ostrich um, is that a horse there is a horse there a and a giraffe and I think that tail back there the green one behind the giraffe is actually meant to be a crocodile um, is there a peacock? Uh, yes, a there is. Thing that looks like a okay. Peacock. There was all kinds of reasons why these animals were considered unclean. A big thing was health. Um, God wanted His people to be healthy, and so. But in, in but in the in the dream, uh, in the vision, 
a voice came from heaven and said, Peter, get up, kill these animals and eat them for your lunch. And Peter says, I can't do that. I can't do that. I've never eaten an unclean animal in my entire life. Ooh. I can't do that. So and he's the showing the snake, the um, donkey and whatever the animal yeah. is called. <laughs> and, um, and God said, the voice came back, God's voice came back and said, don't call anything unclean that I've said is clean. In other words, don't call something not good enough if I've said it's good enough. And then the sheet got taken back up into heaven and the, the vision was over. And Peter was left, left scratching his head thinking, what on earth was that all about? Well, he was very soon to find out. Because just at that moment, somebody called him and said, Peter, come down. There's a couple of guys with a soldier down here to, to see you. And of course, it was Cornelius' servants. And they explained to Peter everything that had happened. And they said to, to Peter, come and uh, speak to Cornelius. Did the people go up or did Peter come down? Well, he said they, they wanted to take Peter back with them. Okay. And because Peter had had that dream, I guess he was thinking, oh, I wonder if this was what God was trying to get me ready for. Maybe. He had to kill those animals may, in the other place. No. Maybe, <laughs> I, maybe I better go with them. Okay. So that's what he, that's what he did. He travelled with the servants all the way back up to Caesarea to meet with Cornelius. Now, when he got there, Cornelius had got his entire family together and lots of his friends all gathered together in his house in order to hear what Peter had to say. And Peter began to talk to them all about how you can know Jesus and how Jesus can come into your life. Look, there he is doing it, talking to the crowd, telling them all about how Jesus died on the cross and how if you if you give your life to Jesus and say sorry and give your life to Jesus and choose to follow him. He'll forgive you and he'll give you eternal life and you can be with him forever in heaven. And all of those really amazing, exciting things that are the good news all about Jesus. That's what Peter was telling those, uh, those guys there. And then something absolutely amazing happened. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended, came down on all of the people there and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Now, this had been something that we talked about in, I talked about in a video a long time ago, um, about how God comes and fills his people with power and uh, gave them a, a language that they didn't understand, that they could talk and use in prayer and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, if Peter was sort of thinking, this is all a bit of a waste of time, why am I talking to all of these non-Jewish people? I don't even know if God's interested in non-Jewish people. If, if, if Peter, was, Peter was still thinking that, even all the time that he was speaking, this showed Peter the truth. It showed Peter that God loves everybody. It shows Peter, showed Peter that God was interested in everybody and a little bit later he went back and he was talking to some of his friends Jewish Christians back in back in Jerusalem and um, telling them hey listen God loves everybody God wants everybody to be Christians God wants everybody to belong to him God is not interested in um, who, what color you are what country you come from, what language you speak, um, or anything like that. God just loves everybody and wants everybody to know Did him. Simon believe in him? Simon, what, his friend in the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I expect so. I expect so. And that's true. God loves absolutely everybody. And this is a verse from the Bible that comes from this story. It says... God plays no favourites or God has no favourites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. Acts chapter 10 verse 34. God loves everybody the same. Should we hear a song about that? Yes. Here we go then.
Fantastic. So Jesus loves everyone. Everyone means the world to God, which is just what our little heart picture that we've got here um, says. And we're going to make one of those now with you. So what you need is you need to print off um, and you can get find them on the Internet, some pictures of the world. Now, um, you will notice that the inks on there is not very good. We were running out of ink. Um, but we decided, hey, it's okay. We'll still use those. It's just a craft. It's just a craft and we'll go show you. But you will want a really nice one. And by the way, we're making a small one of these. You can make a really big one, of you course. You can make it. If you really want to. So, so there's a there's a, a heart for you. There's a heart. heart. Well, it's going to be a heart. 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 See, it's going to be a heart. Okay. So you need some scissors. Okay, yeah, which I've just these. used. Now I've just got these. You need some some prick stick and some sellotape. Okay, and you need a backing. In fact, we'll just make one because um, I've only got one backing. You need um, another collar. Okay, so this one was pink. I've gone for a red here. Again, you can make it as big as you like. And the first thing that you need to do, hang on, hang on. I've got a really great way of cutting oh. a heart. Okay. Who would you fold it in half and then you do the fold heart it in half like that. I did that for okay. a card. Did you? Okay. Do you want to do that then? Yeah. Okay. Cut, cut a, uh, cut a craft. I'll just put this down so that you can see what we're doing. Wait. Okay. How do you do it? Oh. Oh, I've done it wrong. <laughs> no, you haven't. You've done it fine. You've just started it from another angle. That's all. So, oh, oh, oh actually, maybe you have. Yes, yeah. that's all right because we've got another one. Yeah. Okay, we've got another one. Okay, so I'm quite happy we didn't do them both. <laughs> <laughs> so starting starting from the bottom, you can cut yourself a nice half shape, heart shape like that. Yeah. And then when you open it up, of course. Okay. It's brilliant. Looks like a heart. That's what you so, see first of all. So you want to do exactly the same thing with the red, red. one. Now, do you want to do, do you this need one? To do it bigger. You need to do it bigger than that. How yeah. Do you need it bigger. Okay. Well, look. You just you just use as much of it as, as you, you can. can. And that will probably okay. be bigger. Okay. Just like that. See. Ooh. Okay, so that's big. So that's bigger. Oh, that's and then, huge. <laughs> and so that fits on nicely like that. Okay, so that ne now needs to be glued. Should we go with the other side? Whichever way you want. You need to put the. You need to. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. So you uh, use the prick stick for this. Okay. And while Ellie's cutting that, I'm going to show you the next thing that you need to do because you'll notice that it's got a little arrow right there, yeah? And it says, Every, everyone means the world to God, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna take just a bit of paper and you want to cut yourself a little arrow. I mean, if you're making a really big one of these, of course, it can be a big Huge. arrow. Yeah. We're using um, scrap paper as well. We are. Scrap yeah, paper is always good cool. to use. Um, it's better for our environment and... Um, and our world. And our world. <laughs> okay, so there is... I'm cutting okay. an arrow. Now, do be careful with scissors. They are sharp. And it is no problem to ask for help. It's better if you, asking for help than finding out that you couldn't do it. Absolutely it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to write on there, everyone, you might want some help writing mm -hmm. these because it's actually fiddly, means the, and I'm taking advantage of the fact oh, that it's yeah. got a bigger... A, a bigger, bigger thing, thing I'm going to write world to God to or you could do the number two there if you wanted to yeah 
God. So there you are. So show, show them, yeah. Everyone means the world to God. That's it. And then what you're going to do is like this. Basically that. Yeah. So that it kind of just uh, just sort of loops up at the top like that. And you've got sellotape. So you can still see. To do that with. So if you want to let go of one. Oh, okay. I did that one first. That's fine. So stick one side. And then the other side. This is one of the simplest crafts that we've ever made. Now, of course, if you don't want to do a love heart, okay, you can do a different shape. You can do a, different shape. You can do a star, you can do a circle, you, you can, can do just a do a, a square or a rectangle. Um, it's the same principle, it just means that you've got less um, <laughs> different types, or maybe more different types of cutting to do. Um, if you want to do a round one, then obviously you can actually find round pictures of, uh, of the world uh, on the internet already that you can just cut out. But either way, you make this and you keep this and it can help us to remember that everyone means the world to God. God loves everybody the same. God wants everybody, no matter who they are, to know him and to love him, and he loves them first. And that's a great thing to remember. God loves you. God loves all your friends. God loves your family. God loves the stranger, your neighbours, or the stranger down the street. God loves absolutely everybody. Ba-bum, ba-bum. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's really exciting to know. Right, let's pray and uh, we'll finish our video and our time together today. It's been so good to see you. I hope you've enjoyed this video too and have a go at making that craft um, and uh, let us know how you get on. Okay, Father well, we God. Can't, we can't really see them. Eh? We can't really see them. They could, they, could, they could put a picture of it on our Facebook page. That would be really cool. Okay, okay so let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you love everybody. We thank you that everybody is important to you. You don't have favourites. You don't have some people that you love more than others. You love everyone the same. You've got a plan and a purpose for everyone of, of amazing things that they can do for you. And most of all, knowing you and loving you and experiencing and knowing your love for them. So we pray, Father God, for um, our friends, our family, the people that we know especially, that they would find out and learn just how much you love them. And pray, Lord, that you'll help us to remember how much you love us too. In Jesus' name, amen. It has been absolutely brilliant to see you. We will see you again. Bye! Bye.